the probiotic microorganisms are the friendly bacteria the scientific interest in probiotics boosted from the work of meshnikov a famous scientist to transform the toxic flora of the large intestine into a host friendly colony of bacillus bulgaricus which was found by hord in 2008 now as we know probiotics mean for life and are defined as live microorganisms which when consumed in adequate amounts confer a health effect on the host they act to crowd out pathogens such as yeast other bacteria and viruses that may otherwise cause disease and develop mutually advantageous symbiosis with the human gastrointestinal tract now we don't need to go in so much details uh, but you should know that they have an antimicrobial effect through modifying the microflora and preventing the adhesion of pathogens to the intestinal epithelium and they compete for nutrients necessary for pathogen survival producing an antitoxin effect and reversing some of the consequences of infection on the intestinal epithelium it's quite interesting like such as secretory changes and neutrophil migration now these probiotics or the friendly microorganisms can cure lactose intolerance by the production of the specific enzyme that is beta galactosidase that can hydrolyze the offending lactose into its component sugars now some sources of probiotic microorganisms which you can see here are from milk yogurt fermented products the human breast milk gastrointestinal tract and vegetables grains and fruits you can see from milk we have lactobacillus acidophilus and another species lacti and we have propionio bacterium from milk now coming to yogurt we have lactobacillus delbrueckii and its subspecies is bulgaricus we just discussed just now then we have bifidobacterium species streptococcus species and we need to know that there is a difference between yogurt and curd which is usually available in the market and this difference is due to the presence of different microorganisms in yogurt and curd respectively now coming to the other fermented products they give lactobacillus caesii and lactobacillus cellobiosis and other species of lactobacillus and again we have bifidobacterium species from the fermented products and we have enterococcus faecium then we can see here the gastrointestinal tract that is the lactobacillus species gasseri and johnsoni and escherichia coli can be isolated from the gastrointestinal tract and these can be served as important nutraceuticals now let us move on ahead and see what are the different nutraceutical enzymes as you know enzymes are an essential part of life without which our bodies would cease to function those people who are suffering from medical conditions such as hypoglycemia blood sugar disorders digestive problems and obesity eliminate the symptoms by enzyme supplements to their diet now these enzymes can be derived from the microbial sources and the plant sources and the animal sources and here you can see the different examples the enzymes from the microbial sources are such as hemicellulase catalase amyloglucosidase glucoamylase cellulase inverted sucrases and lactase beta galactosidase in the plant enzymes we have hemicellulase again which is present in the plant walls then we have pectinase from the cell wall and alpha galactosidase glucoamylase bromelain from pineapple and biodiesterase from soya bean and we have beta amylase from the higher plants coming to the animal sources of nutraceutical enzymes is ox bile and pancreas lipase from the pancreatic juice and we have trypsin again from the pancreatic juice then we have chymotrypsin and many classes of vertebrates are sources of chymotrypsin then we get pepsin from the animal's tracheal secretions and alpha amylase from the saliva of animals and lysozyme from the saliva tears egg white 
and many animal fluids. So here we can have a very clear idea that what are the different types of nutraceuticals coming from the natural sources. We move on to the nutraceuticals from the artificial sources. The fortified nutraceuticals have been categorized under artificial sources not because they are totally artificial but because they do not come naturally from the basic sources. Rather, these have been enhanced or enriched from agricultural breeding or added nutrients or other elements. Like for example, orange juice fortified with calcium. Now we see that orange juice does not produce naturally with calcium. So we are adding here to enhance the calcium requirements of patients. Then we have cereals with added vitamins or minerals. They are available in the market. And then we have flour with added folic acid and milk fortified with cholecalciferol used in vitamin D deficiency, a very widespread deficiency, especially in women. Then we have prebiotic and probiotic fortified milk with bifidobacterium lactis, and which is used in diarrhea, respiratory infections, and severe illnesses in children. Then we have also seen banana fortified using soybean ferritin gene in iron deficiency. As we have seen nutraceuticals from natural sources. But a question which arises in our minds is what if a particular chemical constituent or a phytochemical which is very important for the normal physiological functions and for the rectification of the disorders and diseases need to be in a larger quantity. So there comes biotechnological innovations and recombinant technologies which help in producing energy providing foods such as bread, fermented starch, yogurt, cheese, vinegar and others which can be produced with the help of biotechnology. Now the production of probiotics and the extraction of bioactive components by enzyme or fermentation technologies as well as genetic engineering technology are achieved through biotechnology. Here we can see some examples where recombinant nutraceuticals can be obtained from recombinant plants or recombinant microorganisms. A few examples I have cited here such as maize, golden mustard, golden rice, iron rice, golden kiwi fruit, tomato. What do these recombinant plants do? They help in treating the deficiencies, the lacuna such as for example vitamin A, iron and folate. And folate as we know is a naturally occurring form of vitamin B9. And it is needed to make red and white blood cells in the bone marrow. It also helps in converting carbohydrate into energy. And it produces DNA and RNA. And adequate folate intake is extremely important during periods of rapid growth such as pregnancy, infancy and adolescence. So here how does it work? Let's have a very brief outlook. We can see here in the case of maize, golden rice, this is generation of or production of transgenic maize with enhanced pro-vitamin A content. And how is it achieved? How is it obtained? So the overexpression of the bacterial genes like we are designating here CRTB that is for phytoene synthase and CRTI for the four desaturation steps of the carotenoid pathway. The pro-vitamin A carotenoids such as beta-carotene, they are derived from plant foods and are a major source of vitamin A. So these bacterial genes, they catalyze the pathways for the more larger production of these carotenoids. Thereby, we can see there is a resultant increase of total carotenoids of up to 34 fold with a preferential accumulation of beta carotene in the maize endosperm. Now it is quite fascinating. In the same way golden rice is also produced using the overexpression of these bacterial genes and as a result conquering the deficiency of vitamin A which affects over 250 million people worldwide and is one of the most prevalent nutritional deficiencies in the developing countries and which results in significant socio-economic losses. 
So this is how we are producing recombinant nutraceuticals and there are many more examples we will see in the future. Similarly, we have recombinant microorganisms which play a very important role in the production of nutraceuticals such as the E. coli and the spirulina pacifica, fusarium venenatum and acetobacter xylenum. Then we have aspergillus oryzae and saccharomyces cerevisiae. Now these are the different microorganisms and the subsequently we get enzymes from these microorganisms and the products which can be made possible for fulfilling the lacuna and the gaps of the basic requirements in the diet such as milk coagulated products, increased hemoglobin, increased brand solubilization, then we have the kombucha beverage, alcoholic beverage and resveratrol. These are some important nutraceuticals which could be made possible due to recombinant biotechnology.